Hey, and welcome to our 1931 two-door. This is Mr. Paul Shen, and I'm Tina, a.k.a. Bonnell T. And we're going to answer some questions, although you know him. He's the big guy. He'll answer all of them, but I'm going to be reading through these as fast as I can. They're questions from Facebook and Instagram. So this is a new thing we're going to try. Lots of questions all the time. We're going to go straight to it. Let's it's going to be fast right. and furious. Let's do it. Nice. So we've got Mike. He's saying, hello, Tina. I would like to know, does Paul sell any of his vintage radios? Yeah. Thanks for everything. Sure. I do yeah. sell them. Um, I used to sell on the radio attic. A-T-T-I-C, attic. Um, I used to sell them there. The problem I ran into many, many years ago was shipping the radios. The tube radios are pretty yeah. fragile. And for whatever reason, UPS, FedEx, uh, they do not care. doesn't matter how you write fragile on it. Yeah. Triple box it with triple foam. doesn't matter. They still break them. I decided mm -hmm. I was done having radios broken, some of them irreplaceable. Yeah. I mean, what do you expect from a shipping company called Oops? So <laughs> I finally decided I'm only selling them in person. So if you want to yeah. buy an antique radio, come over here, point at the one you want, give me cash, walk away with the radio, done deal. All right. And this is Juan Ortega. He's, he's saying, uh, got a couple of questions since you are an expert on Model A's. The A180 Deluxe Phaeton only came with the, lo with the top in tan color. He's asking a question. No. No. I'm restoring one, and I personally like the top in black color, but I can't find any documentation in that time with that well, you can check auction. the judging standards. Um, I know Doug Clayton's uh, 188. Now, he has serial number 495 hmm. in his collection, and it is restored to perfection. Perfection. Wow. Doug's a perfectionist, and I guarantee that car, because that scar, mm. that it's serial number 495, and it scored 495 points in blue ribbon judging. I know for a fact the top was not downgraded, and his top is black. Nice. So, based on that, one of the guys that helped write the judging standards, he made his top black. I think you can too. <laughs> he also was talking about the colors on your um, sedan. No, not the sedan. I'm sorry. Oh, the sport coupe? The sport coupe, yeah. Oh. And he was wondering how to... We're in the sedan. To, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and there's another sedan right over there. Yeah. yeah. But he was asking about the colors on that and how okay. to find those because he's wanting to put it on his A180. Oh, they're in the Mafeka color guide. So mm -hmm. the body is uh, Lombard blue with uh, black reveals and all that. The stripe and the wheels are Hessian blue. And those uh, paint chips get the uh, Mafeka color guide. Go to mafeka.com. You'll see it there. And those colors are in there. Nice. Harley Moore says, is Paul able to identify what type of A this is? They say it's a 28, but n never come across it before. Sedan delivery, um, it looks like. But that's a depot. Somebody built that. They built it? It's like yeah. not an original of any kind? No, or no, that's custom. Just kind of put stuff together? Uh, somebody did a real good job building that. I'll be yeah. putting it up on the screen so you guys Ford, can see what it looks like. Ford did not put out bodies uh, like that. So Brian Blevins says, Hi, Paul. Where do you do I find the VIN number on my 1929 model closed cab pickup? The same place you find it on every Model A. And mm -hmm. you're going to hate to hear this. Uh oh. You know when you're sitting in the driver's seat driving the Model A, where your left foot is, under the car, that's where the serial number is. In order to see mm -hmm. it, you have to lift the body off the frame. <laughs> yeah, Best. the serial number is stamped onto the top rail of the frame about where the driver's left foot is, if you can imagine that in relation to the dimensions of the car. You have to lift the body and the splash apron, and then you can see the serial number there. Wow, thanks, Henry. Huh? Well, okay. why would you have to look? I mean, I don't know. it's maybe, your car. Maybe, you know it's your car. Maybe so. they didn't think about that in, in the future, they didn't think way about into that. the future. Now, people also, um, you know, the, the body... Correction. The serial number is stamped on the engine block as well. Mm. They did that as they were rolling down the assembly line, so they saw the number, boom, 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 stamped the engine. So sometimes people will look at the motor, they'll accept that at the DMV. If you're trying to register it, you can register it with whatever number's on the motor sometimes, but not always. Not always, oh man. All right, Joyce and Bob says, they're said, hey Paul, glad to see you're feeling better. Enjoy watching your video, very informative informative and entertaining we have owned many cool cars old and new just bought my wife a new um ashton martin vantage mm -hmm. am i saying that right yeah and she loves it anyways let's see we're gonna Who get wouldn't? down i know really huh <laughs> <laughs> but i have always wanted a model a we're going to turkey rod run in okay. daytona oh nice. looking okay. for a treasure hurry up and do your 
how to buy a Model A. Oh, well, okay. the, the filming of that just wrapped today. So it's going to mm -hmm. be in editing, and then it'll be out. Yeah, this Saturday, right? Well, I don't know. I'm posting this tonight, so. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> Jess Blinn. I'm going to stop saying their last names because it's just too hard, but I'll be putting it on the, okay, on the, on the page. So, Okay, Paul, because of your great inspiration, I bought a Model A Ford 1929 two-door, first time owning cool. a Model A Ford with all your wonderful content. And, you know, he's just like saying that you're doing such a great job. Oh, That's nice. so nice. It That's was nice. just more of a comment than anything. It's so it's so nice to hear good stuff like that. Yep. We know. love our two-door so much, we record videos in it. Yeah, it's fun. <laughs> <laughs> so good. I'm glad you ended up with a two-door. I think, mm -hmm. in my opinion, which isn't worth anything, my opinion, it is the most versatile of all the Model A body styles. Yeah, it keeps the kids in. <laughs> <laughs> it keeps us in. I mean, really think about it. You can use. The, I mean, if we go on long trips, we take this car. Yeah, we can put tons of stuff. Put tons in Tons of stuff in here, mm -hmm. and I mean, even if like there's times like when we went to Apple Hill, and we took the tour sedan, and we thought it was just going to be us, but then all of a sudden it's yeah. like, oh, we're going up the hill. Oh, I need. Uh, can I ride with you guys? Because yeah. our car's good. And it's like, okay, no problem. And we stuffed two more adults back here. We ride up front, and we had plenty of room. Yeah. We had a lot of fun on that trip. But that was you a never lot of fun. know when you're going to end up with a couple more or whatever. Two door sedan, good choice. Ooh. Brendan says, Hi, Paul. I see Hi, Brendan. <laughs> in some of your videos, your old radios. <laughs> Again, people old are in interested in your radios. So why. they uh, want to get a late 30s Zenith. Okay. Um, so they're wanting to know about that kind of stuff. So since you answered that, they'll see that. Uh, Zenith, yes, good choice. Keep in mm -hmm. mind. Uh, Zeniths, especially the late 30s, uh, the ones that have the 6X5 rectifier, uh, beware of those. The 6X5 mm -hmm. can short, it'll take out the transformer. Wow. Uh, so, uh, uh, but obviously make sure, you know, somebody restores it, change the capacitors in it at the bare minimum. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I mean, almost never have resistors go bad except the ones where there's multi-sections. But uh, Zenith, good choice, especially the late 30s models. Uh, pick something with six tubes or more. Cool. The, the five tube models? Eh. Rachel says, just thought I'd send you a message from Scotland to Hi. say thanks for your vid videos and wishing you well. They're talking about how they bought a supposedly restored 1932 door sedan, which was anything but, oh, unfortunately. No. Poor girl. That just stinks. Oh, yeah. Uh, went many hours watching your videos and finishing my Ford. I'm getting my new radiator <laughs> from, from Black. I don't know, it's spelled B-L-A-A-K in Holland. Block. Anyways, and she was sharing these different things. I'll post her a little picture of hers. It's pretty cool. I like this stuff that's like not really restored. Kind of got a little like rustiness. Patina. Yeah, Tina, I like that. I don't know. I have fun with that kind of stuff. It doesn't have to look perfect to me. And then I'll share another picture she sent. She says, uh, um, sh this is an ancient car. She's, or it isn't her only ancient car. I have a 1912 Al Aldays and Ooh. Onions. I've never heard of that. <laughs> maybe it's Scottish. It could be. I don't know, maybe. Um, but I'll share that little picture. It's pretty cute. Anyways, and one from Michael. He's saying, what is your opinion on rebuilding a Model A two-tooth steering box, keeping as original versus replacing with a F100 steering box, supposedly feels like power steering, versus using a shorter Pitman arm? All right, if you've watched any of my videos, you know what I'm about to say. Uh-oh, what is it? So for Play those for those with sensitive ears, just go like this right <laughs> la, now. La, la, All la, right, la. don't ever put an F100 steering box in. That mm. is the worst decision possible. I've driven plenty of them. You know, even uh, Bob's got one car that has that in it. Mm. And th when they work and everything, they're fine. What happens is it changes the ratio of steering. You have to turn the steering wheel twice to get the equivalent of one turn of oh. steering on the stock box, which really throws you off if you go from wow. one Model A to another. I've almost died in Bob's uh, oh, business gosh. coupe. When, oh yeah. Wow. I mean, because <laughs> I've got to turn the wheel and the car didn't even turn. It's like, oh no, turn it some more. And then it kind of starts, uh, and it freaks you out. So anyway, but that's not the issue. <clears throat> the real issue is in order to make the F-150 steering box work with the Model A, they have to weld that um, F-150 worm gear onto the steering shaft of a Model A. I have seen three of those come apart. And one of them was while the car was traveling at highway speed, ended up in the ditch. Oh my gosh. 
really bad idea. That's scary. Um, the one guy, uh, Randy Gross, down in Southern California, was making a brand new shaft with a new worm gear on it a while back, and I think he stopped making those. That might have been the way to go, but don't. Rebuild your two-tooth. Now, a two-tooth steering box, say that five times fast, Oof. will steer <laughs> very easy if it's rebuilt correctly, if it's adjusted properly. That's the main thing. And I can almost swallow the modification of going with needle bearings in the sector housing. That makes it a lot easier to turn also. Okay. Ta-da. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> that I'm was sorry. a mouthful. Yeah. I nice. <laughs> All right. We got Chris here. He's saying, hi, Paul. Hope you're feeling better. I have a quick question. I found a 1931 Model A two-door sedan that was made into a flatbed truck many years ago. The truck needs some love. It has been sitting for a while, but the drivetrain is all there. He's asking 2,800. I was thinking 2,500. Does that sound about right? I don't um, advise people on values or what to pay for Model A's. I don't. I just, I avoid it like the plague. Mm -hmm. If it's worth it to you, buy it. Absolutely. Um, I mean, the only thing I think of is, you know, if they cut the back of the two-door off is, Doc, I can't feel my legs. Um, <laughs> I'm I'm thinking how well or poorly was that done, and I'm thinking yeah. about the structure because the two door structure really it depends on these two I don't know are these C pillars or whatever they're called back here. The curvature of this adds all the rigidity to the two door body because from here forward there's no rigidity. If you ever put a two door body on a chassis, it's just all floppy and the whole front of that thing just wiggles <laughs> everywhere until you get it down and bolt it down to the frame and then you connect it to the header and everything. It's just, it's floppy mess. Oh my gosh. <clears throat> so what they've done is they've cut the rigidity part out. Wow. That concerns me. <laughs> um, but I'm never, ever going to tell somebody, yeah, that model is worth it. Yeah, that one's not. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, besides, you can't be in front of it, looking at it, inspecting yeah. it. If I was standing so, I mean, there, yeah. you know, if I was close enough to, you know, check it out in person and crawl under it and all that, I might go, eh, yeah, yeah, it might be worth it. Maybe not, you know, whatever. That's fine. But I can't. Yeah. There's no way. And plus, it changes from market to market. Cars here in California, the same car sells for more than that car would in Texas, let's say. I mean, it, it's all over yeah. the place. So. Even pictures are hard to go by. I mean, you can yeah. only take so, so many pictures and so good, you can't really see super good tea deal. Yeah, I need to so, smell yeah, it. Yeah, you gotta really be there to, to see it. that kind of thing. Yeah. One cute little thing here from Rich, <clears throat> he showed us a picture of this Model A, very awesome, 1931. He just wanted me to let Paul know that, um, to tell him the story of when I met Mary Ellen from the Waltons. Oh. Um, yeah, it's uh, he's from Alberta, Canada. The mm -hmm. picture's pretty cool. That would yeah. have been fun. Yeah. People like to share all kinds of fun stuff with us. I love it. So anyways, this was from Christian. I, I did share this with you. Um, we know that there's a lot of people, you know, there's people who are deaf, there's people from other countries and they can't understand English well enough. And I know there's the uh, subtitles that you can put. But closed this, captions. Yeah, yeah, closed captions. So he was saying that I'm interested in YouTube channel, but your YouTube channel has no subtitles. Um, closed captioning because I am deaf needing subtitles. Please switch your YouTube's uh, closed captioning on. And uh, I think you started to do that. Am I correct? Oh, You're working <clears throat> on it, but it's very hard. Oh man! So I tried that. I tried. Oh man! Yeah, it's a lot. You have to of go work. through it. And it. Okay, so it takes me longer to do the closed caption than it does to do the whole video, record it, and edit it. Yeah. And the problem is, I work a full time job. Actually, I work two jobs. Technically, I work 60 hours a week, and I try to put a video out every week and all that. Mm -hmm. There's no way. I, I just can't. I did it on like, that one video <clears throat> just to see if I could do it. Man, was that hard. Yeah. If somebody wants to help and do the closed captioning on my videos, I'd be fine. <laughs> I'll give you a big hug and send you on your way and let you do it. Um, but for me, doing the closed captioning is so hard. Yeah. I Even with this, I'm thinking this is one way I think I can give to Paul and help everybody else is by doing things like this, because otherwise he can't get to the Facebook or the Instagram. He's no. already got so much going on, but we could at least go through this together quickly 
you know, as quickly as possible, make a video out of it, take a bunch of them as we can along the way so we can answer as many pe people's questions. Because yeah, it takes too long for me to sit there and type <laughs> right. out what Paul's yeah. saying, and then I have to like, wait, 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 what'd you say again? And, uh, I'm, I can oh, give the answer four times. It's terrible for sometimes. For her to typing out a little phone <laughs> I can thing. only type so fast. What I should be doing is turning wrenches on a Model A somewhere yeah. and not, you know, sitting there. So anyways, this is faster. Yes. Yes, this, this is, is so good. faster. Okay. So Shelby, quick question, sir. Does the Model A require, I should put my boomer glasses back on, okay, require special treatments such as lead substitutes? Love your car, love your passion. Nope, don't need anything. Just put regular gas in it. In fact, you can put any combination of gas, alcohol, whatever. It, it doesn't really care. Um, mm -hmm. Remember, the Model A uh, was built before there was lead in gas. And back then, the octane was like 40 or 50 or something, maybe 60 was real good gas. Gas was horrible when the Model A was made. It'll run on almost anything. I've seen them, I have seen them run on combinations of gasoline, diesel fuel, paint thinner, all kinds of stuff. Oh my gosh. Yeah, they just, they don't care. <laughs> That's pretty cool though. I mean, if you were in a, in a pinch. You oh know? yeah, whatever. Yeah. Don't ask how the paint thinner one worked out. <laughs> Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. It was funny as heck because, uh, real quick, so, and I won't say who it was, but we're in his garage and his Model A, he wanted to take the Model A out. It hadn't been out. The tank was empty. He says, oh, there's a gas can right there. And so one of the other guys goes over and grabs a can. Is it this one? Yeah, that one. It was literally a gallon metal can of paint thinner. He poured that in the car and it ran. Wow. <laughs> it was That's so pretty funny. cool. Smelled really? horrible. Oh, oh God. Smelled horrible. <laughs> okay, Vincent says, one of the facts, or FAQ questions? Frequently asked questions. Frankly, okay, thank you. Mentioning a few part <laughs> distributors. Okay. Okay. Which will, which I will have to go back and find which video it was, but I was wondering if you had any reputable reputable <laughs> radiator supplier for your parts. Unfortunately, since mine is not an original, it does have a slightly different radiator design than the original with the upper hose located in the direct center. Hmm. Is that norm? Is that really, uh, really, really weird? Um, yeah, he says well, he all really Model A one. radiators had the hose dead center. It doesn't matter what year it was. Okay. Um, he's probably got a hot rod radiator or it something could be. in there. It He's mentioning a Ford 305 engine. Well, um, it's hot rod. It's, that's a, a hot that's rod? a V8, yeah. Okay. I don't know anything about says that. says he needs an upper hose to be closer to the pa passenger side. Back to my question, though, <laughs> I, I may either have had to lean towards the custom built unless I can find a very similar one uh, produced by a source you may use or know of. Go to a radiator yeah. shop. A radiator shop? Itself. Yeah. Um, there's still a few around. We go to the one in Modesto um, hmm. over, and Michael does our radiator, all of our radiators, and uh, he does, you know, new cores and all that in them. He can custom hmm. make anything, um, and most radiator shops. Now, well, we'll put a link to him. Does that sound good? Well, I don't, he doesn't have a website, though. That's the problem. Oh. Like, otherwise, I'd link to him. I'd send him so much business. Oh, my gosh. But he doesn't have a website. But okay. he doesn't need it because he's so busy anyway. Okay. <laughs> so, Vincent, look for a radiator shop in your radiator area. A good shop, yes. And I'll share your cute pictures with everybody, too. Go. Nice Model A. Thomas, hello, Paul. I have a 1934 Model A closed cab pickup. I was wondering why you prefer an alternator versus the original 6-volt generator. I am using the original 6-volt in my truck. I enjoy your videos and wonder if you have a video specific to rebuilding the original generator. Okay, uh, we are going to rebuild generators. That is coming up. I don't prefer alternators, except uh, uh, the cars that might get driven at night. The Model A's, that, the driver cars, if they're going to get driven at night, they get an alternator. The end. Um, <clears throat> six volt. All my cars are six volt. I don't do any 12 volt conversions on Model A's. In fact, I go back to six volts from 12 if I buy one that way. Um, but I do have generators on a couple cars and those cars don't get driven at night. So I keep it authentic mm. and that's fine. Um, but if I'm going to drive it at night, especially like this car we're sitting in right now has halogen headlights, it needs the current. This has an alternator in it. Blaine, he says, I'm looking for a Model A parts catalog in print. Any recommendations? Yes. Yeah. Burt still puts out a print catalog. Burt's mm. Model A store.com. Bratton's, Bratton's.com. Uh, Mike's puts out a print catalog. Max puts out a print catalog. Snyder's puts out a great print catalog. Snyder's.com. 
Mm, nice. That's uh, a great start right there. Ones. Yeah, like that, that'll get you going. Now, I didn't put this person's name because they're saying that this is going to be their husband's gift once they get their hands on one. But they are saying that they saw a video on the new wrench. Are they calling it the right thing? Can you see it? Was that the timing video? I think it's NU. Wrench? Oh, the new Rex, new okay. Rex wrench. Oh, gotcha. Okay, mm -hmm. so they wanted to buy it for their husband as a gift. Um, Good choice. But I now see that there is a Nurex Precision timing kit as well. Oh. Um, do I need both or only the wrench? No, you just need the wrench. Just the wrench. Yeah, do the the wrench. Follow the video, and uh, all the Model A suppliers sell the new Rex timing wrench. Okay. Maria says, I have a few questions, if you don't mind. By the way, we are in the middle of a wonderful cruising the coast where I live on the Gulf Coast of Mississippi. Oh. I was wondering how hard it would be to track down the original owner of, say, a 1928-1929 Model A. That's not a few questions, but <laughs> that's what she says. <laughs> how do you track down the original owner? Well, if the car has been in a club for many years... Maybe somebody has some information on it, but it's almost impossible. If you go to your local Department of Motor Vehicles with the VIN number of the car, maybe, I mean, being in Mississippi, they might be helpful there. Being in mm -hmm. California, they are not helpful at all. Yeah. Our DMV is worse than getting a root canal. <laughs> They'll be all, so, can you help me next? Next. Yeah. <laughs> no, no. Um, it's mm. almost impossible. I mean, the car is almost 100 years old. Um, hopefully you have a good DMV who will help you. And if the car's been in the system and never been out of the system and had to be re-registered, then you might be able to do that. Hmm. Aaron says, good afternoon, Paul. I have watched your video on setting the toe in. Could you let me know what kind of bar you have and where to go to get one? I have seen a few, but like the gauge yours has. Uh, that same video, look down in the, des the description and there's a link, you could just click on that takes you to Amazon. It's the exact same tool. Hmm, That's nice. the toe in gauge for setting your uh, Model A front end alignment. <clears throat> so cool. it's in, just scroll down, minimize the window, scroll down in the description. There's a link, click on it. Off you go. Off you go. Pew. It'll take you right to that page where that tool is. <laughs> then click buy now. <laughs> yeah. Done. <laughs> take my money. Take my money. <laughs> okay. Glenn says, um, I have a 28 coupe with lots of play in the steering and I'm going to rebuild it. Uh, no, build the steering column. Okay. Do you have any idea where I might find any information on doing this? I can find some stuff on the 3031. Um, this might be a good video for you to do. Thanks for your time. It There's uh, two steering boxes. There's the two tooth and the seven tooth. Mm -hmm. If you have a seven tooth steering box, they all have play in them. Mm -hmm. um, the, the seven tooth doesn't have the kind of adjustments the two tooth does. So if you have a seven tooth box, you rebuild it, it'll be great for a while. Um, if you have a two tooth box that has adjustments and all that, try adjusting it first before you do the rebuild. Oh, as far as where to find the info, I don't know. But I'm gonna do a steering box rebuild video pretty soon, mm -hmm. but I'm only doing the two tooth. I don't even wanna mess with the seven tooth. It's not worth messing with. If I buy a car that has a seven tooth in it, guess the first thing that happens? Seven tooth out, two tooth in, first thing. <laughs> okay. Nelson says, I was told within a year after it was restored, he's talking about some car. Let me see. Let me get to the, the, the good guts of this. Okay. I was wondering where you get your turn signal kit from a six volt Model A or four A's six volt, volt middle. You know what I'm trying to say? I think I get the gist of it. Yeah. Okay. All the good Model A part suppliers that sell harnesses will also sell the turn signal kit. You have to cut into the wires that go to the rear lights if you're going to use the the uh, tail lights uh, for turn signals. But um, what we did in the video uh, for Athena, where I installed a new wiring harness, I just purchased a harness with the turn signal kit already included. And if you watch that video, you see just how clean and how nice that is. It's just, it's a dream. The wiring is just, it just plug and play. Off you go. I mean, <laughs> no mess, no fuss. Nice. It's so easy. If you're going to replace the wiring in your car, go that route. If you're going to just add turn signals, um, then check out Bratton's, uh, Snyder's, uh, Burt's, and Mike's, and Max. I know they all sell the turn signal so, kits. Yeah, just okay. do the kit. If you want to piecemeal it with wire from the hardware store, don't do that. He also says he believes on one of your videos you said something about a book of for first-time Model A owners. Oh, yeah, that would be the Red Book, as it's called. That's the Les Andrews uh, Ford Model A Mechanics Handbook. 
Nice. All the all the part sellers sell that. Just ask for the red book. Les Andrews book. Mm. It's fantastic. All right. Another Michael uh, Bruno. He says. Hi, Michael. Now the <laughs> thing that's the biggest part of what he has. He says he's six two, and. He says, can I fit comfortably in a 1928 through 1931 Model A coupe, or am I wasting my time chasing a dream to find and own one? Can the seat be modified back for a better leg room for a tall guy? Yes. Um, so there are some body styles to avoid. Um, if you're going to go with a coupe, which probably that's a really good choice for you. Um, yeah. You can remove the tray that's behind the seat. I've seen this done lots of times. Hmm. Remove the, the tray and then the whole seat assembly can be moved backwards. Just pull the seat mounts, move them back, drill another hole, and then you still have an adjustable seat, but you lose the tray, but you gain, I don't know, six inches or so of leg hmm. room, which is a lot. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> what you helpful. do want to avoid though is anything that says Roadster. Avoid oh. that, like the Roadster pickup, or the, you know those. Cause, Louis Paquito. Oh boy, you're sitting with the steering wheel right here as it is, <laughs> like like Bob's mail truck. You know, you're sitting there because it's all designed for, you know, the back. You're sitting there with the steering wheel right in your gut. You know, there's nowhere to go. If you get in a crash, you're eating the steering wheel. Oh my god. But wow. uh, like our sport coupe, um, although the package tray is still in our sport coupe. Uh, the seat cushion is modified slightly with better foam that doesn't have to be as thick. Hmm. And so when I'm driving that, my arms are straight out, and I've yeah. got all that room in there. And you know that that car is pretty comfortable. Yeah, it is. All right, Rob says, I was watching your video on brake adjustments, and in previous videos from others, I have not seen them take off the rods. What is the significance of taking the rods off before the adjustment? Ah, two things. First of all, if the rods are still on there, you don't know if they're pulling any against the um, brake actuators. <clears throat> so people are always putting big emphasis. Uh, if you go to any of the web forums and all the experts, you know, they put the same, all oh, the brake actuators, the, the arms have to be 15 degrees forward. That way you get full pull back on the brake and all this. Okay. You will not know if the actuators are actually at 15 degrees forward with the brakes off unless the rods are off. So you pull the rods off, that way you can tell A, where the brake actuators are when there's no pressure at all on the brakes. B, it also makes you, it forces you when you put things back together to adjust the rods because a lot of people mess that up. Hmm. Okay, Greg says, got another issue with my 1930. I rewired the car as you showed on your video for the headlights. I put in the halogen, uh, uh, halogens, everything is wired, but it, uh, sparks when I hook up the positive. The light switch on the original and the top part that goes into the spider spins, or spins? Is that mm -hmm. what he meant? All the way around? I maybe mean, means spins uh, around. So I tried both directions, it would go with oh, the same result. Any ideas? Yeah, <laughs> the uh, light switch rod, at the end of the rod, there's two metal, I don't know, tabs that stick out and the wafer that he's talking about. So in the headlight switch, the wafer that actually turns, those two tabs engage two slots and it's spring loaded. So the end of the um, rod is spring loaded. If you put that together without those tabs being in those slots, all it does is push up in and it will be kind of like free spinning. Um, hmm. And it could short out. It could short the light switch out too. So uh, check that, start there. So Tim says, I um, was looking up engine VIN numbers online. I have an 86 Chevy 4x4 that I had no problem finding the VIN online. Just got a Model A, need restoration. Um, through your videos I've watched so far, I know it's a 28-29 Model A that was just passed down through family. Let's see, it was restored in the 60s. Let's see, what else? When we're going to get down to the meats of things here real quick. Um, Is he trying to find the year by VIN? Maybe let's or the see. month? On the engine starting with an A, can you give me advice on finding the numbers online so I know exactly what year this went back for my great grandmother? Online, no. But I know yeah. that in the back of the red book, the Les Andrews book I mentioned earlier, mm -hmm. um, in the thick pages, like the thick cardboard pages in the back, there's mm -hmm. a whole list of uh, serial numbers beginning in. So, say, like, you know, 
uh, March 1928, and you know April 1928, and and it'll have beginning and end serial numbers. So you find your serial number in somewhere between here and here. Okay, then move to the left, and it'll tell you what month and year. That's in the back of the red book. Hmm, okay, awesome. Frank says, Paul, I've talked to you a couple times. This is uh, Frankie Cav Cavallo from New Orleans. <laughs> I can <laughs> mention you, um, messaging you about my 1931 Ford. Model A, I am having problems with my foot start starter. I changed it one time, and now the new one is still getting stuck. Could you tell me why this is What's getting sticky? stuck? Oh, uh, well, I wonder if he converted it to 12 volts or something, because if you do that, sometimes they spark pretty hard when you hit it, and then it welds itself to the little copper button on the top of the starter. Hmm. Um, but if he has not if it's still 6 volts, uh, and it's welding itself to the top of the starter, something is amiss. Hmm. Um, his starter's probably time to rebuild it, it could be. Um, the starter, typically, like when we uh, rebuild a starter, and then I uh, put it on the bench and run it with no load, it draws about 80 amps. Um, so try that if you have an amp meter that'll go that high. <laughs> um, see how many amps your starter's drawing. If it's drawing too many amps, it might be a starter issue. Hmm. Okay. They could change the... You know, field coils or something, maybe, or, or you know, have you could send a starter out, have it rebuilt. I mean, who knows when the last time that starter got any attention? Maybe it's just time. Yeah. Okay, I think we'll just do two more because I'm trying to keep this shorter. It's your so, channel. Do what you want. I know, but still, uh, fast, fast and furious, and furious. You know, kind of thing. Um, so we'll, we can always do another one of these because there's a lot of people been waiting for answers. So. Sorry, yeah. guys. Yeah, it is what it is. You know. Join a club. <laughs> Lots of answers in the club. That does help a lot. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. There's always some old guy that knows everything in every club. <laughs> like Bob. Yep. Everybody's right. got their Bob. <laughs> David says, hi, Paul. My 80-year-old father found you on YouTube and told me about you. We both think that as guys get older and pass their cars down to their kids, I'll be picking up my dad's 29 sedan Briggs body leather back on, oh, back in October. Mm -hmm. uh, that my generation is getting back into A's. Oh, nice. Um, which is, that's awesome. Cool. Do you have any video for guys like myself that know cars very well, but mostly modern stuff? I'd be interested on learning. Well. Every video. Pretty much every video. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> yeah, no, I don't feel like you try to cater to like the older crowd. You're trying to get no, the, the new generations in the mix. Yeah. We got some like 17, eight, actually All I even heard from a 16 year old who's into the older cars like this yeah. and really wants to restore them and has a couple things going on already. Well, remember Holden cool. Ford. Yeah, and Holden Ford. I mean, Ford. that kid's a rock star. Yeah, he's you know, awesome. He drove down here in his 56 Chevy pickup from Washington. Yeah. Drove the Model A's all over the place and then got back in his 56 truck, drove to L.A., drove to Jeez. Vegas, drove back to Washington. That kid's a rock star, and he's restoring his Model T. It is now on the road. Wow. Not quite finished. Um, so, yes, all the videos pretty much there for everybody. All I care about when I'm making videos, my demographic is, do you like Model A's? Do you have a Model A? They're for you. And let's get it on the road. Let's get it going, or, yeah. or get, get one and get it on the road. Yeah, because I, I cater to the people who are thinking about it. Yeah. As well as the people who have already pulled the trigger and have one. Yeah. We just want them restored the best possible and, and working. Just have fun so with it. so cool. Yeah. Make it a part of your life. And to make them realize how easy it is to actually do it themselves. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Robert says, hey, I have a question. My Model A is hot. Carb is dead on adjustment. Timing is dead center. Okay. And so the carb column is, dead on. is third, three-fourths down and battery is good. Also, I cannot figure out what is wrong. Any ideas? No. Um, huh. <laughs> I don't really understand. Bummer. So he's saying his carb adjustment's dead on. Yeah. I guess. I think that's what he's meaning. He has trouble yeah. restarting when it's hot. Could be fuel boiling in the carburetor. Huh. Could be that. Also known as vapor lock. Could be that. Um, hot starting. Usually Model A's, when they're hot, they start instantly hmm. i mean i never have to be like rah, rah, and it's, it's always like rah, and the second you tap the starter it's going uh, hmm. when they're warm they just start immediately um so my guess would be boiling fuel or something if i'm reading the question or hearing the question correctly i don't know and i'm not wondering is it the way i'm trying to read it because i'm 
the way it's flowing, it, it's hard to like, is there's no commas, yeah. there's, you know, kind of thing. No punctuation. Well, hopefully, I'll, I'll get back to him, see if we can answer it a little better, well, safe from understanding it. Know. Maybe it didn't. Um, Joe, I think we'll make Joe our last one for tonight. Is it Joe Davis? It is Joe Davis. Hi, Joe Davis. <laughs> it says, hey, Paul, love your hey, videos. love you back. <laughs> I have a friend looking to sell us. Oh, he's trying to sell something for somebody. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, let's see what else he has to say. Uh, <laughs> selling his 1930A Roaster Deluxe. It's in great condition. My question is, does the sheet metal and gaps just is, okay. It says does, but okay, I'll keep reading. Does the sheet metal and gaps just don't line up like you see in modern cars? Oh, yes, like that makes sense. the doors, not sure if this makes sense. The doors overlap. When you close the door, it just kind of falls on top of the body. Mm -hmm. They don't fit flush like modern cars. Um, hmm. If the Look at the body lines, especially. Yeah, guess, like, yeah, the other ones just go into the. They the only flush, ones that do are huh? like the four door or the A four hundred or whatever. They fit flush. Oh, okay. but like the coupes and the pickups and the two doors and all that. The doors just kind of sit on top of another body pedal. Um, like this, right? Like this. Yeah, yeah, this does that too. Yeah. This is a cheapo. Mm -hmm. So, um, but the difference. Is, so look down the body though. So if you look at the door and the body line, like where the pinstripe normally goes on a Model A, if they're not straight, like if they're askew. You know, one's off. That could be a bent frame. Hmm. Um, or also check the hood gap. So if the hood gap is smaller up top and the gap is wider at the bottom, like down t uh, by the uh, splash apron, that also means a bent frame. Oh, wow. That's yeah. good information. All right. Well, that does it, guys. It's easy. Uh, we'll keep on going at these. I'll be posting them on Wednesdays, kind of a little middle of the week treat. Cool. And... Uh, Go keep getting through these different people, and I know pretty much daily we get more added on. So um, we'll just keep on trying to get through this. Um, this video I'm going to try to make as short as possible. <laughs> That's funny. Good luck. Yeah, good luck. Woo! Yeah. But I hope you guys really enjoy it, and I hope that you end up looking forward to seeing these, and I hope it answers lots of questions for you. Keep those Model A's getting on the road and enjoy driving them. Yep. Any last words? God bless. Thank you. Yes, God bless you guys. And everybody have a wonderful Thanksgiving. <laughs>